Dovinson analyzes the relationship between early Christianity and Judaism through the lens of Paul's writings, a key figure in the New Testament. He observes that the subject of Paul and Judaism has been a focal point for many biblical studies, sparking various influential works. Ironically, the term Judaism, or its Greek equivalent, only appears twice in all of Paul's letters. Paul mentions his past life in Judaism, pre-conversion, Galatians 1, 13, 14, using it to describe his activities and vociferous zeal for his inherited traditions. Novenson indicates that the modern English interpretation of Judaism is not necessarily synonymous with the way Paul uses it in his letters. Traditionally, Galatians has been viewed as a piece opposing Judaism, fueled by Paul's admonition against compelling Gentiles to Judaize. However, many contemporary scholars question whether Paul's reference to Judaism truly refers to a religious system or something else entirely. This confusion stems from an etymological issue of translating the Greek term used by Paul. The query forms the core of Novenson's study, focusing particularly on its implications in Galatians. He effectively analyzes an important but often overlooked detail, contributing to a nuanced perspective of Paul's relationship to Judaism and forming an integral part of modern New Testament studies. Also, the interpretation of the term eudaismos in Galatians 1 has varied, but most interpretations, dating from late antiquity, suggest it signifies Judaism as a critique of the religion. The distinction between eudaismos and Christianismos is first made by Ignatius of Antioch. Notably, Marcion of Sinope also sees Galatians as a depiction of a clash between two religions and ultimately two gods. Tertullian accepts Marcion's interpretation of a conflict with Judaism, without the inferred conflict between two gods. Augustine reads the passage similarly, stating that Judaism is at odds with the Church of God due to the Jews' carnal and slavish way of life. Modern interpretations persist with this view of Galatians as Paul's treatise against Judaism. Martin Luther viewed Paul's prior involvement in Judaism as a reflection of the feudal religious hopes of those trusting their own merits. Rudolf Bultmann sees Paul's condemnation of his Jewish striving for righteousness in Galatians 1, 13, 14. Similarly, Karl Barth perceives a critique of Judaism, noting the necessity of radical conversion for Israel. In recent interpretations, Hans Dieter Betz suggests that according to Galatians, Judaism is entirely excluded from salvation, while J. Louis Martin sees the primary polarity as between God's apocalyptic act in Christ and religion, with Judaism falling into the latter category. This interpretation from ancient to modern has potentially shaped how Judaism and the relationship between Christianity and Judaism is perceived. Moreover, Novenson explores Steve Mason's revisionist interpretation of the Greek word eudaismos, eudaismos, traditionally understood to mean Judaism. Mason propounds that there was no term for Judaism as a religion in the ancient world. Instead, the concept is closer to ethnicity, associating it with the term Judean. When referring to Eudaismos, however, Novenson does not delve into the distinction between ethnicity and religion, but assumes a conventional rendering of the term Jew. Mason posits that Eudaismos is more closely aligned with the Greek verb to Judaize, which implies adopting Jewish customs rather than the faith's actual practices. This Judaizing, Mason suggests, can only be performed by non-Jews, much like other ethnic-rooted Greek verbs function, signifying the adoption of practices by non-native individuals. Conclusively, Mason interprets Eudaismos as the adoption of Jewish customs by non-Jewish people, and proposes translations like Judaizing or Judaization. Mason infers that when the Apostle Paul speaks about his prior engagement in Eudaismos, Paul implies his involvement in promoting Judaizing among non-Jews. This interpretation has implications for understanding Paul's biography and the situation of the early Paulist churches. Novenson leaves open the question of whether this revisionist understanding of Judaizing, rather than Judaism, is accurate in historical and biblical interpretive contexts. Furthermore, Novenson proposes a deeper examination of the terms to Judaize and Eudaismos, arguing that their etymology and usage hold different implications. According to Novenson, the term to Judaize in its traditional context, means for a non-Jew to follow Jewish customs, as seen in Paul's accusation against Peter for compelling Gentiles to Judaize in Galatians 2.14. He notes that the Gentiles are being compelled to Judaize, not Paul's opponents, suggesting that the concept of Judaizing is something considered by those contemplating the adoption of Jewish customs, not what is already being practiced by other Jews. However, with regards to the terms uh, Judaismos, Novenson challenges the traditional interpretation by Steve Mason that posits the term implies the act of observing Jewish customs by non-Jews. Instead, Novenson emphasizes that in actual usage, eudaismos designates an activity carried out by Jews, citing instances such as its implication in 2 Maccabees, 
4 Maccabees, and Galatians, and its appearance in two epigraphic records dating back to the Roman period. Novenson accentuates that despite etymology, suggesting eudasmos refers to behavior emulating Jews by non-Jews. In usage, it rather affirms and promotes Jewish customs by Jews themselves. He contends that the discrepancy between the etymology and usage of these terms asserts the dynamic nature of language, showing that meaning is not solely derived from etymology, but can vary based on the context and time period of usage. Overall, in Novenson's view, to Judaize signifies non-Jews adopting Jewish customs, while Eudesmos indicates Jews' own pursuit and promotion of their customs, a reversal of their etymologically suggested meanings. In addition, Novenson suggests that the term Judaism, Eudaismos in Greek, which is first found in the text of two Maccabees, stemmed from the Maccabean Revolt in the 2nd century BCE. Novenson posits that this term was deployed as a contrast to Hellenism, Hellenismos, denoting the adoption of Greek customs by non-Greeks. Two Maccabees presents the term as a measure of resistance to the sweeping Hellenization that preceded the revolt. The heroes of Two Maccabees are the Jews who reject Hellenism and align themselves with Judaism. Their commitment entails a faithful devotion to Jewish ancestral traditions, even under duress. However, notably, Novenson stresses that not all Jews practice Judaism as understood in Two Maccabees. It's not simply what Jews do, but rather what zealous Jews, those who resist Hellenization, do. Importantly, it is not an ancestral religion but a political cause, a program to protect the ancestral faith. In essence, before the persecutions led by Antiochus IV, there was no Judaism. Jewish ancestral traditions didn't need a term because they didn't have to be chosen or defended. They were simply what we Jews do. However, during the Antiochene persecution, practicing certain traditions became a political act that required a term to reflect this choice. This is how 2 Maccabees introduces the term Judaism, a choice by Jews to adhere to their own ancestral customs, despite external pressures. Ultimately, Novenson presents Judaism as not merely a religious tradition, but an active resistance to cultural assimilation and a concerted effort to uphold ancestral Jewish customs. Further, Novenson discusses the role of Judaism in the narrative of Paul's epistle to the Galatians. According to Novenson, the term Judaismos, often translated as Judaism, is used in ancient sources to refer to a particular form of Jewish political activism, rather than to Jewish religion and culture in general. He suggests that the word Judaismos denotes a partisan initiative to uphold and propagate Jewish customs, something that pertains only to a group of politically radical Jews. This understanding, Novenson believes, sheds light on Paul's self-portrayal in Galatians 1.13, 14 as someone who is fervently committed to his ancestral Jewish traditions. However, he debates that the conventional reading of this as an indication of Paul's greater-than-average adherence to Jewish faith is inaccurate. In Galatians 1.13.14, Novenson disputes, the emphasis is not on Paul's past Jewish religiosity, but his active engagement in a conservative Jewish anti-Jesus faction. Novenson suggests that the term eudaismos is thus best interpreted as something akin to Judaization, focused on militantly preserving Jewish culture and traditions. Novenson also argues that Galatians contains only limited commentary on Judaism, as contemporary readers understand it, that is, the religious practice of non-Christian Jews in Paul's time. The book doesn't pose Judaism as a rival means to salvation. According to Paul, Jews would not perceive the law as a means of justification, a misunderstanding only Gentiles were likely to make. Paul also seems to anticipate that the conversion of Jews would eventually occur naturally as part of God's plan. The term Israel of God in Galatians 6.16 is viewed by Novenson as a reference to the Jewish community, which he believes Paul hoped would come to accept the Messiah in time. This stands in contrast to Paul's letter to the Romans, where he confronts the disappointing results of the apostles' outreach to the Jews. In Galatians, however, he maintains an expectation that Israel's acceptance of the Messiah will take care of itself. Last but not least, Novenson contends that in Paul's letter to the Galatians, Paul is not focused on Judaism as the religion of non-Christian Jews. Instead, he is worried about his Gentile followers adopting Jewish customs or Judaizing. While Paul acknowledges his prior support of Judaism, Galpert 1, 13, 14, this was before his call to become an apostle. Even after his apostolic calling, Paul was still actively involved in his ancestral Jewish faith. But the subject in Galatians 1, 13, 14, is Paul's previous campaign to defend Jewish traditions, a political program he refers to as Judaismos. Paul's commentary on Judaism as we define it today, the adherence to Jewish customs by Jews, is found not in Galatians but in Romans. Here, 
Paul critiques the Jewish people's misguided pursuit of righteousness through law and works, Romer 931.32, and their attempt to establish righteousness on their own, Rom 10.3. Still, even Romans doesn't provide a full overview of Judaism from the Christian perspective. Near the end of his life, Paul's understanding of Judaism did not completely align with the modern understanding of the religion. Therefore, his letters offer limited insight for a Christian theological understanding of Judaism. Novenson highlights that Paul largely interprets Judaism in relation to his mission to convert Gentiles and indicate faith over Jewish law and customs. In conclusion, Novenson presents a comprehensive study on the depiction of Judaism in early Christianity, particularly through Paul's letters. He notes the concept of Paul and Judaism has been profoundly studied, despite Judaism appearing only twice in all of Paul's works. He debates the modern English interpretation of Judaism, differs from Paul's usage focusing on the implications of this in Galatians. Exploring historical interpretations, Novenson recognizes that Galatians is often perceived as Paul's diatribe against Judaism. However, scholarly interpretations vary from Marcion's notion of a clash between two gods, to Bultmann's view of Paul's condemnation of Jewish striving for righteousness, to Martin's perspective of Judaism as excluded from salvation. Novenson also examines Steve Mason's interpretation of Eudaismos, Judaism. Mason suggests that the term refers to the adoption of Jewish customs by non-Jews, rather than the religious practices of the Jews themselves. Although Novenson doesn't debate the distinction between ethnicity and religion, he leaves open the question of whether Mason's revisionist understanding is historically accurate. Besides, Novenson challenges Mason's interpretation, maintaining that to Judaize signifies non-Jews adopting Jewish customs, while Iudaismos indicates Jews' own pursuit and promotion of their traditions. He suggests that these terms' etymology and usage illustrate the dynamic nature of language, where meaning can shift based on context and time period. Novenson theorizes that the term Judaism, originating from the 2nd century BCE Maccabean Revolt, reflects not an ancestral religion, but a political cause to defend Jewish customs. He suggests this term emerged in response to Hellenization during the Antiochene persecution, where following Jewish traditions became a political act that required a term. Additionally, in Paul's epistle to the Galatians, Novenson interprets the term Judaismos as reflecting a politically active group of Jews rather than the broad spectrum of Jewish religion and culture. He disputes that Paul's past commitment to Jewish traditions, depicted in Galatians 1.13, 14, reflects his involvement in a conservative Jewish faction, not general Jewish religiosity. Finally, Novenson suggests that Paul's letters, while limited in providing a complete Christian theological perspective on Judaism, interpret Judaism mainly in relation to Paul's mission to convert Gentiles and privilege faith over Jewish law and customs.